Hey, what's up, everybody? I just want to take this time out to tell you a little bit about Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest, I repeat, easiest way to make a podcast for beginners. It's free. There's also tools that allow you to record and edit the podcast right from your phone, laptop, computer, whatever. It will also distribute your podcast for you. So you can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many, many, many more. You can also make money from your podcast and you don't need any minimum listenership. I repeat, no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Order up. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, King Simi, here for another episode of FFD. That's right. This is Food for Dummies, episode five. Today, we're going to talk about the reasons many women don't initiate conversation. The reasons many women don't initiate conversation. Excuse me. Now, just to let you know beforehand, this comes from a man who has never had any problem getting or approaching a woman, period. I doubt I ever will. Sorry, I just have to put that out there. This message is only for equality and reciprocity for women because I've seen women get a lot of misinformation from other women and get a even worse information from males who aren't the men that they are seeking. So they'll use that information that they're getting from a man who isn't the man they want or the man that they value and they will use that and then use it for the man they value and undervalue that man. This message is also to dispel some misconceptions and biases that some women have been giving or either created towards men themselves. So this is how the show is going to go. I'm going to recite verbatim the reasons of several dozen women. I've asked this question to several dozen women. I'm then going to recite my responses to these to these reasons. And then after that, I will end with a few theories that are rarely said or even admitted when it comes to this topic so let's jump right into it i asked my ladies what is one reason or what's the reason you don't parentheses won't approach a man and simply initiate the conversation first response is fear of rejection not knowing what to say to initiate the conversation I think the times I've wanted to, my guards go up initially thinking inside, what am I doing? I think for so long it's been taught that the man goes to the woman to initiate the conversation. And if the man doesn't, that must mean they are not interested. But as I have grown and matured, that is not true. Honestly, one of the best, most well thought out answers. She's very mature. She's one of my good friends. Uh, Next response, as a woman, I've been told I'm too aggressive especially when I go after what I want. So I decided to scale it back and just wait. Now I know her um, somewhat personally and she is boss material. Like if you, if you envision a CEO woman, this would be it. So I told her I can see what she means, but as a woman with her stuff together, it is very intimidating to a lot of men. So you can't put yourself down or lower yourself in any way because some of the men that you have encountered don't appreciate it because the alpha male that you're looking for will appreciate it and he will make you even better. And then it's just one woman who messed up the whole continuity of this conversation. She said, it's not ladylike. We gonna get into that later. I whole, (laughs) I I just laughed and said, wow, interesting. Thank you. I don't even know what ladylike means. You can't start a conversation neither here nor there next response is fear of rejection i'm either being too blunt or straightforward or coming on too strong this is a legitimate reason and we will get into this later uh because it doesn't come up as you know one of the first reasons that women will give you as to why they don't um next response is because i'm plus size and dark skinned now as a man i hate hearing this reason because that shows me that a lot of men have done her wrong because of how she looks and because either they liked her and, you know, trying to fake like whatever the case is. We'll get into it later. But I, as a man, I just hate seeing that. Next, next response is a lot of women are saying fear of rejection and that is spot on. I told the dude I liked him in eighth grade. He looked me in my face and said, ew. She then 
puts an uh, exclamation mark and says, never again. We're definitely going to get into that one. Most definitely fear of rejection, fear of rejection, fear of rejection, not knowing what to say. Um, next com- comment says, I've tried a few times um, and got left on the radar, told no. So now I don't do it. Of course. Uh, besides fear, I don't know if I even want to be wasting my time trying to get a man who may not even be worth the time to approach because everybody still wants to be a player. Now, we definitely going to get into that one because my question to that woman was, I completely agree, but have you ever taken the time out to consider that the men that approach you feel the same way? Like, a lot of men are afraid of relationships. A lot of women are afraid of relationships. So that's the one of the main reasons we're having this conversation. So we understand each other and how, how we feel. Um, <laughs> if his teeth are beyond tolerable and if he has any strange odor, then no. Also, you can be bummy. Just don't look homeless with a home. <laughs> I agree. Appearance is definitely a, uh, a major factor women don't like to admit that they objectify men almost as much but appearance is definitely a factor on any scale um few older women said i have no problem uh unless i either know or think he's literally or emotionally unavailable nothing would stop me perfect answer uh my friend said i always approach i don't like being approached just because you decided i was attractive mm that's what a lot of young women don't want to hear. Just because you uh, thought I was attractive doesn't mean I have made the same decision about you. I'm aggressive, so why don't you? So why don't you smile? And can I buy you a drink? Lines are played. Makes sense. I will buy you a drink from the other end of the bar. I choose when you choose. You lose. That makes complete sense. Next response is because I don't want to seem desperate, and because I tend to be shy. I have approached before, but the guy always just wants to get in my pants. Um, this I don't even need to wait till later. Ladies, if a man wants sex and that's the number one thing or the only thing he wants from you, it doesn't matter if you approach him, he approaches you, you get connected, you you go on a blind date, he's going to show you that's what he wants. So a lot of women believe that a man thinks you're desperate because you start a conversation, you need to deal with better men because those men are childish and immature. And like I said, you have these childish and immature men as your friends, but you know those friends would or could never be husband or boyfriend material. So stop subconsciously connecting the two. Uh, My friend said, I definitely shoot my shot and I don't care, but sometimes I don't go up to people because of their attitude, to be honest. Yes, uh, fellas, we need to check our faces. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, That is definitely one of my downfalls. (laughs) I used to have just the worst resting face ever. Um, And it just, it wouldn't make me approachable regardless, you know? So that goes both ways, actually, you know, because a lot of women feel like, oh, men only want this or that. Like, no, you just don't seem approachable. You know, a lot of men who aren't necessarily always going to approach any woman he likes, he he picks and chooses. It's, It's definitely the percentage or the probability that he would even get a response that determines you know if he'll if he'll talk to you uh next comment was rejection i almost never shoot my shot i might make way for a person to be intrigued by me if they initiate conversation perfect but if not then it must not have been meant to be definitely gonna get into that because i i don't understand why women think that oh if a man doesn't talk to me, he doesn't like me. And if we never talk, it's just fate, destiny, whatever the case is that you believe. Like, no, it takes two to make a thing go right. And that's another reason why we have this conversation. I'm used to a man coming to me to initiate the conversation. A lot of men are attracted to me. Sometimes I'll greet the man to get him to talk. But most of the time I want him to take the lead of the conversation because my nerves or shyness get in the way. I agreed. And said initiation of a conversation isn't the domination of a conversation. All it takes for men is, hello, hi, how you doing? Like, it, it doesn't take a lot for men. Like, as a man, it, we, have to be more, we have to be more smooth when we approach women. I'm just going to be honest with you. Men, we, it, it doesn't take a lot. It does not take the same amount of effort. 
and just to simply initiate conversation and then see where it goes from there, you know, I definitely understand the shyness, uh, you know, but a simple, hey, hello, how you, it, it's very simple for men and a lot of women think that it has to be as clever, you know, as, as men's pickup lines or whatever the case is, but it really does it. Um, sometimes they take our intention out of context. They think you are down for sex or something. But other than that, I will talk business in a heartbeat. You want to make money or no? That's interesting because as long as it's something you want, you're still going to go out and get it, right? If it's money, if it's business, you have no problem still initiating that conversation just based off the possibility of you getting return on investment. That's my biggest, that, that's one of my biggest points. If you want something, you're going to go get it. Why is it only changed when it comes to a woman simply initiating a conversation with a man? We'll definitely get into that later. I'm a woman. I see what I like and I go get it. Uh, that, that was one of the most light comments. I see what I like and I go get it. I have no problem. No problem. Just have to point out these are more mature women uh, physically. Rejection, most of the time, they are just always full of themselves. Down to earth, good people are hard to find. I hate to be that guy that says that works both ways, but that's just life. Like, it, it's just life. I've had only one man approach me out of the blue. Interesting. He liked my fro and told me to change the color to pink and proceeded to pat me on the back. I was in my bum wear at the store picking up cold medicine. My question is, why are guys more interested in a woman when they are sick? False. Men just don't care. We don't care where. We don't care how. We don't care how you're dressed. We don't care what you're in. If a man likes you, he will, I won't say all the time, but if he wants you, he will approach you regardless, right? He will try regardless, and that's why a lot of men question, does she really want me because of these responses? Because a man, like, it's, it's not a male thing. It's not a male mindset to be like, I want it, I'm going to go get it. Honestly, I've seen women have that mindset better than men, and these are the, the owners of the company. These are the CEOs. These are the ones that's on the board. These are the ones that's making moves for women, you know? It, it just is what it is. I won't approach if I think he has a person. Definitely a legitimate reason, ring, anything else. You know, if you're out with a girl and he looks the same age, yeah, I definitely get that. That's real. I'm an awkward turtle. Turtle. That's definitely a reason, um, <laughs> male or female. If you're uh, a unique person, you know, a lot of times we feel like we won't get appreciated or understood. So, again, that's a very legitimate reason. My point in going through all these comments is the majority of the legitimate reasons come from women who are older. 35, 40, 45, 50 are, are the women that, that gave the, the legitimate reasons. So, here are a few of my theories, and then we will go through that and call it a day. I'm going to make this as simple as possible. And these are in no means any specific order. So first, men are raised how to treat women more often than women are raised how to treat men. A man or a male is told as often as possible from either his mother, his father, if he has one in his life, older men in general, or the other women, the older women in his life, a man is taught this is what you say to a woman. This is what you don't say to a woman. This is what women like. This is what you shouldn't do. This is what happened to me. Don't be like that. A, a man hears that very often. And most men hear that. No, the, the same amount of women do not hear that when they grow up. So they can only go from their experience or a lot of times the bad experience that either their mother or their close, uh, closest female representative tells them because of what they have gone through. Like I said, 
all the other reasons that I just told you that literally boxed men up and acted and assumed that we're all the same way or that we all think the same way or that we all act the same way. That's the information that these women are giving to younger women. So young women grow up thinking, oh, yeah, all men are the same because my mama told me that all men are the same because I grew up seeing that. And we get boxed, you know, together with men who don't necessarily fit what you're looking for just because of what you've seen and what you've heard. And if you don't see good, then you're automatically going to correlate any red flags with it automatically being bad. My next reason, gender bias. Now, males have this and females have this. I, as a man, have seen males not understand what women go through or the thought process behind women being more cautious or women being more prepared than they are. You know, as a man, I know if a woman asks me over any time, any day, uh, a lot of us aren't going to second guess it. Women can't do that or they shouldn't they can it's just not safe because men are a lot a lot of men are creeps let's be real that's a gender bias men don't have to think twice about it a woman does or should the first word i want to give you when it comes to gender bias is affluenza a lot of you may not know where that comes from or what that means don't worry that's what i'm here for i'm gonna tell you affluenza gained popular notoriety through the court system. Affluenza has gotten a lot of rich and coddled Caucasians out of being convicted. What it basically means when it comes to the case is because of the fact that I never had a responsibility or because of the fact I never had accountability, I cannot then therefore be held responsible for my current actions. So a lot of women have affluenza and gender bias when it comes to a man because they've never felt the need to or they never had to. And the second they do and it goes bad, they immediately go back to Hey, you know, I never had to work for anything. I never had to pay for anything. It was just always there. It was always given to me. So now I can't be held accountable if I make a wrong decision or if I miss an opportunity. I only say that to say that many men are expected to remain the same entirely. While currently women are evolving. The the, the main reason the, the main the main reason that a lot of women say is, oh, I'm old fashioned. Oh, I'm old school. Oh, I'm this. I'm that. How things used to be. And if we're going to be objective as a man or a woman, I would say the exact these exact same things. If we're going to be objective, things weren't always the best for women. Old fashioned. Old school. These women were being cheated on used and abused at about the same rate if not higher than they currently are they just felt they had no other option but to stay and i'm glad as as a man i'm glad that women are becoming as independent as they are because i would never co-sign anyone staying in a situation or relationship that is detrimental to their mental health their physical health, their children, their family, anything like that. So that's another one of the reasons these conversations are important to me because I don't want this generation and the next generation of women coming up to believe that these things are okay because these reasons that women give are the exact same reasons that men give when they mistreat women. The exact same excuses men give when they mistreat women. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. I'm no. Do better. Take accountability. Like I said, affluenza is a lack of accountability or responsibility. Which leads me to my next reason, lack of accountability. Uh like I said earlier, quite a few women will base their life on destiny. A lot quite a few people will base their life on destiny and fate. I tie it into this because a lot of, like I said, the, the comments you heard earlier, a lot of women believe if it's meant to be, 
it'll be. That's low level thinking. You never hear a manager say that. You never hear a founder say that. You never hear a president say that. You never hear any high ranking official. You never hear any matriarch, any patriarch say, oh, if it's meant to be, it'll be. No, if you want it, go get it. What what kills me is, uh, like I said, the comment earlier, a lot of women will say, oh, if he doesn't talk to me, then it just must not have meant to be. No, you could have made it happen too. Like it takes two to make a thing go right. Not all streets are one-sided. There's intersections, there's highways, there's expressways. Like a lot of people think one dimensionally and they refuse to open up their minds. So they stay in this bubble. And that's what I'm trying to break because a lot of people aren't realizing their full potential in their own life. I'm only using the relationship or initiating a conversation as an example because it's so simple, especially with men. Like it's so simple. We really don't need a lot, you know? And destiny and fate makes way for a lack of accountability and responsibility in saying, oh, this was destined to happen. Oh, I'm just like my parents. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. And you're blaming everybody else but yourself, which leads me to my next sub point, destiny and fate or a lack of accountability that makes it easier for some women to blame men entirely. See, if you don't start the conversation, you can say he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that, but never stop to question, he lied to me. No, he didn't lie. You never asked him that question. Granted, that's a semantic, but it's just an example. A lot of people never have conversations and never have accurate or healthy communication. So they blame everything on the other person when in reality, at the end of the day, when you date someone, it's your responsibility to get to know that person, right? At least as a man and what I've always dated, it's been my responsibility to get to know that person, to get to know what they like, what they don't like, what their shortcomings are, what they think their flaws are, and what I think their flaws are. Because a lot of women have been told by so many men and so many people, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, you're doing this wrong, and it's not wrong. It just wasn't what that person wanted, or it was too good for that person. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of, I hate, I hate using alpha and beta, especially when it comes to females, because everyone's different, but there are a lot of alpha-minded females who are just go get it. This is what I want. I'm going to make it happen. Can't no one tell me no, especially if it's good, especially when it comes. There's nothing on this earth natural that is better than a woman, that is stronger than a woman. A single mother will make things happen, period. I can't see a single mother blaming destiny and fate for their kids not eating. You see how silly it sounds? Oh, well, if it was meant for my kids to eat tonight, they'll eat tonight. No, you go make it happen. That's accountability. That's responsibility because that's a part of you. That's yours. And if it's in your life, regardless of whatever level, it's yours. So it is your responsibility to have an input on how healthy that is. Sometimes, regardless of what you put in, it still will not be healthy. But we need to have that conversation that, okay, I did this, I did that, and it still worked out this way. We also need to have the conversation that, oh, I didn't do this, and I didn't do that. That made a way or that made it easier for this to happen. Because a lot of women believe that men's thoughts and emotions are different than theirs simply because of our actions. And I tell a lot of women this, men really aren't that different. Like as humans, we have the same needs. We have the same basic wants. We have the same basic dues. We all have to do the same thing. Well, we all should do the same thing when we wake up. You know what I'm saying? Like we all should be practicing hygiene. We all should be taking care of our responsibilities and our kids. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just certain things that are similar. And the buck doesn't stop there. Just because some men handle situations differently than 
a woman does doesn't mean they don't have the same thoughts or the same emotions. I'll give you an example. Say I'm in a relationship. My girlfriend brings me a problem that she's facing. She just got off work. It's bothered her the whole day. She comes to me and tells me, thank you. That's what a relationship is for. You should feel free to come and talk to me. Now, as I won't even say as a man, but as me, as Simeon, my number one priority after she tells me what the issue is, is to solve it. My number one priority is if I cannot solve it, I'm going to help her solve it. I'm going to find someone that can help us solve it because it's not just a her problem. You see what I'm saying? It's not just a, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you know, like some men do that. And that's why a lot of women are not used to a man be like, okay, okay. And then when he only wants to solve it, it's like a lot of women perceive that as not listening. No, I'm listening to you. I just don't want it to happen again. You see what I'm saying? And that's my number one priority. As a man, I hate to see my woman hurt. I hate to see my woman physically, mentally, emotionally having problems. So my number one priority when she comes to me with a problem is to take that problem away. Whether I have to take it from myself personally or I have to put it somewhere else. And in experience of talking to many women and many many relationships and many experiences a lot of women's first go-to is to listen and be there right you're not trying to solve it the first thing that goes in your mind is oh no what's wrong with Simeon I don't want him to be going through that these are the same thoughts the same emotions but sometimes they produce different actions. So women believe that our thoughts and our emotions are different because our actions seem different. No, I love you. I care about you. I don't want this to be a problem. A woman says, I love you and I care about you and I want you to know that you can get through it, that we can get through it if and when it happens again. You don't want it to happen again, but you're letting him know that you're there. You're letting him know that we're going to get through it and that's why a woman is a rock. But that's that conversation. And I mean, that's that communication. And sometimes you might have to start that conversation. A lot of a lot of women say men don't talk. You never hear the same women say the, the exact same amount of women say, yeah, I tried to I tried to start the conversation. I tried to initiate the conversation. I tried to change how I approached you don't hear the same number of women. You'll hear 100 women say men don't talk. I promise you, you won't hear 100 women say, oh, yeah, I changed how I approached him. I changed how I initiated the conversation. And that's what brings me back to men are raised how to deal with women. And a lot of women aren't raised how to deal with men because it's not the fact that you're saying a wrong thing. It's how you're saying it. It's are you saying it at the right time? You know, because women have have impeccable memory. So are you saying something that can set him back at a time where he needs you to put him forward? And then wonder why he shuts down because he told you something at a moment of weakness that he was before. And now he's in a new moment of weakness and you bring that same energy, you bring that same conversation back. And the same way we would act is the same way you would act. If, if you deal with a traumatic situation, which three or four out of five women do, whether that's sex trafficking, whether that's rape, whether that's molestation, whether that's even attempted, one of the above, you'd be surprised at to the statistics that women go through these things. And that's why I said earlier, gender bias, men don't even understand what goes on which is why we need conversations like this because a lot of women can't say it themselves. So other men need to be like, hey, don't joke about that. Hey, man, you know, like we other men need to step up, right? Which leads me to my next point, F personal insecurities. 
women think that everything that's important to them is important to us. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not. A lot of men are going to love you the exact same way, whether you have your fingernails and toenails done or not, whether your edges are on fleek or not, whether you have piercings or not, whether you gain weight, lose weight or not. A lot of men are going to love you and treat you the same. The problem is the adolescence. The problem is the fact that a lot of women suffer rejection as an adolescent or preteen more often and then a teen and they never let that go. So you're judging a man who was already immature and childish and his age showed that and followed that. And a lot of women take that and keep that because they're afraid of that ever happening again. So they don't give that opportunity to a man to let him. Hey, I don't look at you like that. That's not what I think of you. I don't care what anybody else thinks of you. Here's my biggest problem as a man. Women say it doesn't matter that other people point out their insecurities. People say it, they, they don't care or it doesn't matter that other people point out their insecurities. But they'll hold on to a negative word much more stronger and longer than a positive word. And that is why a lot of women have to start these type of conversations with other women and themselves because you blame the men for your insecurities whether it's current whether it's in the future your present is rooted in your past so anytime you have a recollection anytime you have a subconscious memory you don't you don't try to have it here's the thing a lot of men think women want to be insecure they don't they can't help it. There's three different ways of thinking. There is the conscious, there is the subconscious, and there is the pre-conscious. You can't control your thoughts, but you can control your actions. And that is the accountability and the responsibility that I'm talking about. One of the top five reasons that a woman will never initiate a conversation with a man is because of their insecurities. So my question to those same women are, can you be fully loved by a man if you can't even initiate a conversation? Because of your insecurities. Can you let go of your insecurities when I'm telling you that I don't care about that? When I'm telling you I love you regardless of what you believe your insecurities are. Because you heard another woman tell you that or because you were in a relationship with another man and that man didn't love you right but you loved him and you think that's the end all be all and you're still holding on to that time and bringing that time, that, that tree of insecurity, and rooting it in the present. Your present is, is, is rooted by the memories of your past. So if your past only bared bad fruit, what more do you expect to come from a relationship of any sort, familial, romantic, whatever the case is, regardless of who initiates it, if you're still planting bad fruit? So make sure your present isn't rooted in your past. Because I'm just going to be honest with you. I, as, a, as, as a dating man, anytime I start dating, I tell a woman, you're beautiful. You know, we're dating, so of course I'm going to think she's beautiful. But how you dress when we go on dates is not as important to me as how you dress when you're comfortable. Because as a man who's dating for marriage, I'm not going to see you like that every day. I don't need to. But what I am going to see you every single day is when you wake up. When you brush your teeth. That's the energy I need to see. I need to see the, 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 the maintained energy. Because happy is an extreme. Sadness is an extreme. And they don't happen all the time. They don't need to happen all the time. Because we wouldn't appreciate them or value them if they did I need to know how you are when you're happy I need to know how you are when you're sad that's the insecurities but it, most importantly I need to know how you are when you're nothing when there's nothing on your mind when there's nothing worrying you when there's nothing that you need 
done, solved, whatever the case is, how do you look then? How do you act then? What is on your mind then? Because that's what matters. Because that's the goal. If I'm dating for marriage, I'm going to spend my life with you. So that's what matters. This this conversation is because at the end of the day, it seems pretty minuscule and childish to women when they grow up. Wow, I missed out on a lot of good men just because I didn't initiate the conversation. And what kills me is we live in a social media age. So I'm going to just give you my life. I have 10,000 followers on Snapchat. I have another 3,000 on Instagram total because I have multiple pages. I don't use Instagram like that. Facebook is another 3,500, 4,000. I have no idea. That's 20,000 people. I'm going to be real with you. I don't like social media like that. So the only time I see a person is if they add me and or message me because I don't go through my suggested for, I don't go through that, but I pop up on a lot of people's pages. So I would never see a woman a lot of times, especially on social media, regardless of how close we are, because I'm not looking, you know what I'm saying? So that brings me back to how stupid the destiny and fate excuse is because I'm not going to wait for a woman to see me. You know what I'm saying? And that's not a, it's, it's not a male mentality. It's just the, okay, I would love a family and I would love a family with this type of woman, with this type of mother, with this type of person. So if I see someone that might embody that, why would I not go for it? So it makes a lot of men question, is that really what you want if you would never go for it again? Because a lot of women don't like the fact that men put shallow things so highly, money, possessions, cars. But what those same women don't want to admit is women change when men have those. See, the same women who gave me the reasons they wouldn't approach a normal person, all of that would go out the window if their favorite celebrity was in their vicinity. All that BS would go out the window. Oh, I'm too shy. Oh, I'm too scared of rejection. No. Let's be real. All that crap will go out the window if your favorite celeb, if your crush, your celebrity crush was in your vicinity or you knew where they were at and you went there. All that BS goes out the window. So that's why I'm having this conversation because it's like, let's be honest with ourselves. It has to be more. So that's why these are only theories and these are only a few. I stopped at like eight. I have eight like real bullet points and I stopped because I didn't want this to go on for an hour. <laughs> this is already like the longest podcast I've done and probably will do for a while just because like it's, it's, it's a broad topic. But the reasons, quote unquote, that people have given that I read or that you might give yourself, let's be real. Those will go out the window for the celebrity that you have a crush on, that you really, 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 really like, you know, I, I can name a few, uh, Michael B. Jordan, mm, Chris Brown, mm, Idris Elba, uh, Ryan Reynolds. He's this good looking dude, you know, like, I can go on and on. Justin Timberlake. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are just dudes that women have portrayed as heartthrobs. So all that BS, all the reasons that you gave will go out the window. But you don't realize that women run the world. So if you took more initiative, men would then take more initiative to be better. Men don't care how they act because at the end of the day, they know there's a huge portion of women that will accept the bare minimum and all you're looking for is if he approached you and what you don't want to uh, what a lot of women don't want to admit is the the dudes that they approached when I was talking about the adolescent and the preteen stage those were the men that they did not think or they they knew a long-term relationship wouldn't work out a marriage would definitely not work out women don't want to have that honest con a lot of women don't want to have that honest conversation of you know what the dudes that I did approach or the dudes that were approaching me at this age and that I accepted I knew they weren't you know what I'm saying I knew they weren't nothing I knew it wasn't gonna work out I knew you know whatever the case was I was just doing it for fun I was just doing this I was just doing whatever the case was and now when it comes to a time 
to where you see a man on his business. You see a man that is that is high potential, that is just high value in terms of what you want, because all women want different things. You know what I'm saying? No, no two women are the same. You know, and not to say that women are complicated or difficult individuals, but just as people, we want different things. We might have the same thought process. Like I said, men and women have the same thought process, but we want different things and how we go about getting them shouldn't always be different, you know? And uh, one of my last points, lack of empathy towards men. I'll explain. I said earlier that I don't like using the term alpha or beta simply because even though I would be neither, um, I would actually be an omega. A lot of men don't fit into the black and white category. And this is me speaking up for them. So while I have no problem articulating myself and having a good conversation on a podcast, on social media, being myself regardless of where I'm at and who sees me there are a good portion of men that do and the reason I say lack of empathy towards men is because the the reasons every single reason that I gave you works just the same for a man if not worse a woman will get rejected five ten times in her life because she's going to stop trying Like every single person said, oh, yeah, I'm never going to do that again. She's going to stop trying. She might not get to 10. A man can get rejected 10 times in a day. (laughs) That's why I say lack of empathy because it works both ways. But we don't we don't we never hear you rarely hear that conversation. And I've actually heard 90 percent of the stuff I'm saying from women. So don't think it's just coming from a male's perspective because I would be saying the same things if I was a woman. This is all about equality and reciprocity. And I want better for the women of this generation and for the next generation. But it's going to be very hard if you have a destiny, fate, wait to something comes to you mindset. Because it didn't work then and it's not going to work now. Like I said, a lot of women want to talk about the old fashioned, the old school way. Let me be real with you. If it wasn't for World War One and World War Two being a necessity for droves of women to have to start working because no men were in the factory, the same number of women that went to work then would have not gone to work then. It was out of necessity. A lot of things came out of the necessity. I'm glad they did because I love an independent woman, personally. And a lot of women think that there aren't men that do, but there are just because of the sheer number of men who know how easy it is to manipulate you because you're holding on to these values. You're holding on to this false independence, which is my last reason. And the reason I say it's false is because you're, the reasons I just gave you, women admitted to abiding by gender roles that were created and assigned by a patriarchy that was meant to keep women docile. I'll say it again. The false independence stems from abiding by gender roles created and assigned by the patriarchy that was meant to keep women docile. So while you're holding on to these old school ways, these old school ways were told by told to women by men so they can cheat, lie have other families, have other lives, and that woman stayed. That is why this conversation happens, because I hate seeing women stay. I hate seeing people stay in situations that are unhealthy. And then they use a reason that thinks empowers them, but was used and created to devalue them. So I'll say it one more time. This false independence that quite a few people have that they're holding on to. I want things to go back to the way they were. (laughs) No, you don't. Your grandma was unhappy. She just couldn't tell you because it would break the family up. And that wasn't the gender roles 
that were created. A woman couldn't think, couldn't speak, couldn't have a mind of her own. And now I am so glad that women do. But so many of these same women are holding on to the things that were made so they would shut up. That's what I don't get. And so many women don't understand. It's not empowering you. It's not empowering you for you to sit back, wait, and have this mentality of it'll if it'll be, it'll be like no. That that that's honestly, that's religious. Like, oh yeah, this will this will happen. No. If you if you are religious, the Bible says prayer without work is dead. You can use prayer as a synonym for a lot of things. Faith without work is is dead. So if you believe in something, you have to go out and get that. Male, female, child, elder, whatever the case is, if you believe something and if you want something, you have to go and get that. And the reason I'm so serious about topics like these is because, like I said, these same values that so many people are holding on to were meant and put in place to make them docile. When fashion was created, it wasn't created by women. When the equation of beauty was created, a woman didn't make that equation. And you're living your life based on what other people tell you is special, based on what other people tell you is beautiful. I'm sorry, that just sounds stupid to me because I think every male and female is beautiful in their own way just because what somebody was looking for at that point in their life didn't match up to what you had to offer doesn't mean you change but a lot of women change because the man that they wanted wanted them to so now the man that they say they want doesn't necessarily look the same way that the man they chased and the man they accepted earlier it causes a dichotomy i'm gonna be real with you i never had a problem attracting women it wasn't because I look good, no. It was because of my aura. It was because when you see me walk in the room, who's that? Before I ever had any of the, I currently have six revenues, avenues of income. Before I had any of those, other than like music and talent, it was just me. And it was because I knew who I was and I wouldn't allow anybody else to tell me who I was. And I wouldn't abide by whatever was going on and what was cool. Crazy thing was, I never tried to be cool, but I was the coolest person there. That was what was attractive. But what a lot of women don't want to admit is, you know what? I was attracted to the bad guys. I was attracted to the thing I said I wasn't. I was attracted to the very same thing that caused me pain. I was attracted to a bad man because of my father. Take accountability. You were 18 when you moved out the house, 20, 21. You're 30, 35 now, and you're still blaming what happened to you 10, 15, 18 years ago. And that goes for males and females, but I think I've been talking way too long. Way, way too long. Yep, we're at 48 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to end this podcast. This is... King Simi, this has been another episode of Food for Dummies. This is FFD05. Reasons many women don't initiate conversation. If you like this message, like it, share it. Feel free to comment. Uh, you know, give me your feedback. Uh, feel free to donate, whatever the case is. Uh, my link is in the bio, wherever you may be listening. Until next time, stay hungry.